I think looking back, we wanted life to look differently to the way we were being told life should look. We are Nick and Dolly, and we, I, I hesitate, to say, hesitate to say we were owners of the break. If you like, I think that's exactly right. Feels like the break when you said owns that, us. I was just like, really? Do yeah. we own the break? I, th I feel like we, it lives, it lives us. We're the inhabitants of the break, and we have helped the break to become what it is. Yeah. With the help of lots and lots of people. And we have our cabins, we have Jackson's and Jake's, named after our old dogs, and our workshops and our studio. We look after the break, and the break looks after us. Yeah. There was a mother and daughter living here, they were lovely. And they wanted to sell so the daughter could buy a farm. We fell in love with it immediately. Coming up the drive, the trees, roses growing over the entranceway. We didn't okay. want to overstretch ourselves in any way at that no. point. No. And um, having been building a house out in Mexico and had to suddenly stop that, pause that. We had six acres of land up in the mountains and kind of sort of idyllic. Um, and we just had to literally let go of that overnight. And so coming here, it was just survival. We were still in survival mode, really. But then when we saw this, we did have to stretch ourselves a little bit more. I think just because we saw the opportunities that were here and without realizing it, we were buying a kind of smaller version of what we had in Mexico. We, what we've done here is what we're planning to do in Mexico. Yeah, so, 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 so the Mexico dream kind of kept following us without us actually realizing it. And then we got carried away. And, and then we... But then Nick kept saying, I've got an idea. <laughs> How about we... And I'd be going, oh, God, here we go. It, very, very much an emergent process as opposed to yeah. a, this is our plan. You know, we had absolutely nothing of that nature at all. You the know, only buildings that were built with a plan were the workshop and my studio. We've changed things over the years. Walls have come up and down, and it's just been a constant sort of process. I think, looking back, we wanted life to look differently to the way we were being told life should look. I think that was a little bit. Yeah, and we were dealing with a lot of life stuff that were not was not our choice or not in our control. So our youngest, our, you know, our daughter did have many, many, many um, health issues. So the first, you know, six years of her life, six to seven years of life, were very, very hospital bound. So um, we, with one thing and another, so that was also the current mm underneath everything was was attention to that as well and and then obviously the boys had their needs just being children and so yeah it was just sort of like a, a juggle that we were continuously doing that it's just called life yeah. you know it wasn't a <laughs> plan we didn't really plan anything. i mean the, the only time we began to plan was when we thought oh can we can rent the cabin out i knew i wanted to write I knew I wanted a life other than making or supplementary to making. We suddenly realized we had the cabin and that it wasn't being used very much and perhaps we could rent it out. But that was when you rented things out by going to the local tourist board. Yeah. And putting, putting a flyer, posters. putting a poster up. This is only 15 years ago. But you put a little poster up and you get, you know, one person coming every month or something or whatever it was. And they pay you by check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so when so I'm thinking Canopy and Stars, yes. Yeah. So Canopy and Stars came to existence probably in 2011-ish. I can't remember when it was. And they found us and uh, promised that they'd be good for us. And sure enough, they, they'd been brilliant for us. And so, yes, and so we did that. And then we had the idea of this place. This used to be my studio. So there used to be a, an entrance way here behind me. But we change, we change what we need to change in order for it to be what we need it to be. But it's... It, it is what it is for at least five or six years first and then it becomes necessary to change it because we've got another idea. I think, I think what to start with is, is, this, is the kind of um, the heritage. And the heritage is that this space is actually three different timescales. So you have the bedroom which is in an addition, uh, sort of block addition built in the 60s. You and the bathroom as well. You have the main, the, the, the bunk room, which is in part of the original 100 year old house. And you have this room, which we built 15 years ago. So it is mostly a, a wooden structure. Wood is the material of opportunity. 
because you, if you can get it locally, if you, you it, it, it's approachable in terms of construction with it. Well, it's an ecological thing for you, isn't it, for us as well? Yeah, that, yeah. In the sense that it's it just, you know, it's a renewable energy, it's a renewable source that has been used forever. I think again, though, it was relational. We wanted to have a relationship yeah. with something that was real, that was actually had a life in it. I think. We didn't want dead materials in no, us. No, no, that's right. I didn't want my you know, house to be poured off the, out of a cement truck. Yeah. We wanted something alive. This, this, you know, one could say is not very alive because it's sort of mud on a wall. But it's, it is alive. Came out of our you land. Know, you can see my hand marks on, that's my son there. Yeah. <laughs> and we dug it out of the land. It was really about how do we adapt what we had into a way that would serve people living here. It kind of all works, but it works in a kind of slightly unplanned way because we were dealing with what we had. So it's not a completely intentional space. It's a space that we've had to really look at how does it work. And, and when we found that. that arched window, that was just like, ah, that's perfect. Because yeah, we needed yeah. a stepping stone. We needed yeah. something that was going to like make sense. And that window 100% made sense. And that window lends itself to being a partition, but with curtains, it's again call and response the whole time. And, and like you know, we planted a vegetable and it turned into a tree. And then we felt we were in a flow after that. We kind of that helped us make sense of how everything else will work. You know, when we converted this, um, I, I love being on my drawing board. I love doing drawings. You know, I had to plan out how it would function. But then the rest of it, how it looks. That's completely organic. That just comes yeah. about us standing in here together, debating, arguing, what, what have we got? I remember this was Dolly saying, we just recently built the cob oven. And Dolly said, I want to do a cob wall. It was like, okay, so where can we do a cob wall? Okay, let's do this as a cob wall. So it's, it's that kind of thing. It's been led by interest, um, by expediency. Being by... very clumsy, all those, uh, that, that's all because I'm incredibly clumsy. Oh, yes. And I break lots of things. Plates, you did when you were, when the when kids were. When I was were, pregnant, you... I had, and, and yeah. when the children were young, I was just dropping things all the time. Yeah. So that's all genuine fragments of, of <laughs> breakages. So lots of recycling without, or upcycling, whatever it's called, without knowing that word. Yeah, or, yeah. Or lots of mistakes, lots of going down the wrong corridors. Yeah, so <laughs> everything has a story, has a time frame, has a. Yeah. One of my favorite bits, whether I'm building a bit of furniture or I'm building something else, like a structure, is seeing the pile of material. And just, I think you've come into the workshop before now, when I'm just mm. standing there looking at a wall of wood. And I'll, I might do that for hours, hours on end. And the little brain cells are whirring away. I can't draw everything I can sense in my head, so there's a lot I keep in my head. And it's been the same with these pieces. With these pieces, spaces. these spaces, is that I do a sketch for dimension's sake and all of that, and drawings for dimension's sake, but the actual image is, is stuck in here. We don't have a kind of style, as it were, things that we have collected over the years. With I have grew up in Africa, Nick's travelled lots, we've travelled lots together, and together we've amalgamated and combined things that we've collected as individuals, somehow it works. But back to this whole thing of does one plan or does one, you know, if I go into a project and I'm too kind of um, narrow in the way I see it, I'll create a boring thing. Why do people want to come and stay in these sort of places? Because so many houses are built as white boxes. They're built because mm. they were built on the drawing board or on a computer program. Mm. Because they're not built with a pile of materials and how has it evolved? Because it's not cost effective to build that way. So it takes us a kind of balance between these two things. You don't want to be too chaotic because you can make yourself an awful lot more work than you need to. So you need to be planned enough and have an idea enough, but you need to respond to the materials you might have around and come up quite weird materials that you might have around. Well, I think it's creative courage, you know, it's like, and it's and it's imagination, as you say, but it's like having the courage to actually fulfill on the imagination. Yeah. That's where the energy, that's where the agency comes when you are working with your own hands and your own heart-mind connection. And it has to be functional. Useful and beautiful. I, I think yeah, beauty, we, we haven't talked about beauty. And I think no, that- No, beauty is essential. I think both of us, we don't mind not talk about it very much, but we're both very predicated on it. Beauty. We're very hung up about it.
I am an artist in the sense that I know my way around different materials and have lots of different ideas of what to do with those materials and have a very kind of active um, sort of exploratory mind about how to investigate those materials and, and that can arise to being lots of different subjects. That's been quite a confusing journey for me because I've been a bit of a butterfly kind of like homing in on one thing but not going really deep into it because I get bored or I get disenchanted. That's one way of looking at it. The other way is that I'm just curious and I'm creative and I just want to explore. Whatever evolves and whatever comes out of that, I don't have an intention for. It's just a journey. I went from ethics models to restoring furniture, from restoring furniture to making furniture and um, did the university thing, but it was never really, I was going to end up in some museum somewhere, the curator in a museum, and had this itch for my hands. So really, that, that's been what, what it's been. It's been, I've needed to, partly, I've needed to quieten this with these. Um, and I wasn't a natural, I've had to work at it. I, I wouldn't say I was someone who naturally was skilled and able. I had to work to become so. And now that we are renting out both spaces and have been for the last 10, 12 years, whatever it is, um, you know, it is a, it's a gracious enough way of living and, and we, sharing our lives temporarily, three yeah. days, three nights, one yeah. week with families who come in and out of our lives. There is something important to us about sharing our space. That, yeah. that is important. Yeah. And if that can work together with income, then it's that kind of Buddhist notion of right livelihood to yeah. me that it plugs into to some degree or another, which is, you know, money is not a bad thing in its own way. We, we, we need money in this world. We just have to work out how it dances with our life and how we dance yeah. with it. And in the yeah. summertime, you know, it's really very exquisite. It's only six or seven weeks where we have each family in each cabin, we welcome them as they arrived. We have the most wonderful wonderful evenings every single time just people we'd never otherwise meet and we have just incredible conversations and the children play in the garden and even if there's a big age gap suddenly you know two days later the bigger ones are babysitting the younger ones because the parents got together got on and they all decided to have a drink together in the hot tub or whatever you know you just like you facilitate it really you know one of the big questions that often comes up for me if it's sold what would someone else do with it well they probably knock it down and build some stonking great house which doesn't have community involved with it and because it has the view and that always kind of preys on me a bit for a lot of families or, or couples it starts with going to camp with stars yeah. and looking for a slightly different experience to yeah. what yeah. might normally be available and then they've got the choice of how wild are they we're not wild here yeah. yes we've got a stunning view yes we're in a wood but we've got a town nearby we've got a road nearby but it's got it's got texture you know the actual space itself there's light do you know what I mean it's got it's got all the dimensions and that's what yeah. People seem to like. A lot like. of the feedback we get through the book, through the online feedback campus does, is that people are delighted in the space. Yeah. They love, they're inspired by it. The marginal place is kind of caught between uh, intention and life, imperfection and perfection. Always the notion of what else is there to fix or to do or to do, all of that. And yet, I, I, I struggle to be without it. If we look ahead to when we get older and will we still, will we sell this? What will we do with it? Part of me is like, ah, oh, ah, oh, be free. And part of me is like really anxious. Well, like, what are we like, going to do? No, like, I literally got like, well, what, how am I going to spend my time? Yeah. Because it's literally a life. It's it like our, it's it our needs, life. It's our life. it is our life. Mm. Like 100% right livelihood, relational, visceral. It's like a child. It needs tending, constant, relationship, care, love. And escaping from, and, it's just like a child. <laughs> and, uh, and just a very, you know, and but it's had its challenges. It's brought many, many, many challenges. It's not, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's had dark times as well as really light times, you know, been all of those things. Mm -hmm.